Hi, I'm Kurt with Traverse Tool Company. Every once in a while, I'll get a call from a customer who wants to know the capacity of a boring head. So how big or how small of a hole it's capable of boring. So I'm gonna explain that a little bit here at my workbench, and then I'm gonna show you in the machine. So first the short answer, then I'll explain myself. So the minimum and maximum boring capacities of a boring head aren't determined by the boring head. So that's why you'll never see that, um, uh, that specification uh, on, uh, on a website or in a catalog uh, where these boring heads are sold. So to explain that, the minimum, let's start with the minimum, go to maximum later. So the minimum boring capacity is dependent on the boring bar that you put into it. Here's a little side note, just for a, a quick rabbit trail, when you get a boring head or a boring bar, you have to make sure that the shank of the boring bar is the same diameter as the hole in the boring head. So it fits nice um, right in that, in that hole right there. Okay, getting back to the capacities. So I'm gonna take this boring head or this boring bar and you can see how the neck is turned down on it. It's much smaller. So I know that, um, the minimum bore diameter that this boring bar is capable of is 286 thousandths of an inch. So that means if I mount this in the center hole and I adjust this so that the, the head is, the boring head is centered, and the so that means the hole is centered to the spindle, then the, with this boring bar in here, the minimum capacity of this boring head is 286, but because of the boring bar, not because of the boring head. So um, I can increase that. I can move this all the way out to one, uh, one side. I'll show you in the milling machine in just a moment. And I can put this out uh, on the outer side. Now I have a, a, a larger capacity. And then if I want to, did you notice a little hole going in the side over here? Well, I can put a boring bar in the side of this thing. And I mean, the maximum boring capacity is however much you dare to stick that thing out of there. It's risky business if you have it out there too far. So be really careful. But so what is the maximum capacity? Well, kind of depends on the length of the boring bar, how much you want to stick it out. So here again, not only minimum, but in the maximum, there is no capacity on the boring head. It all depends on the boring bars. All right, let's put it in a machine and see what it looks like. Just for a quick overview of how these boring heads work, you'll see a dial up on the boring head here. It goes from zero and all the way around to 50. And then down here, you'll see two lines with arrows and it says 0 0.001 inches. So every line on this dial equals one thousandth of an inch. So I have my indicator set up behind the boring bar and I'm going to zero the indicator. And go ahead and move the boring head as if I'm going to adjust it. So I'm going to move it 10 thousandths. So now where I moved it is to the 40. So that's 10 thousandths away from zero since it goes up to 50. Or I can move it 10 thousandths the other direction. And you can see how that how that works. So what this is doing is it's, it moved the boring bar 10 thousandths of an inch. Now when you bore that hole, it's going to increase that hole size, the diameter of the hole, by 20 thousandths. So be careful when you use this. Um, if you only have a couple of thousandths to bore just to clean something up, and you go two thousandths, it's going to take away four thousandths. So this works on the radius, not the diameter. So with this particular boring bar in the boring head, when I turn the machine on, I know that it's gonna have a minimum bore diameter of 286 because that's what 
the minimum bore diameter of this boring bar is. So you can see that turns right on center, and that's with all boring heads, is that that center hole, when you, when you center the boring head itself, is lined up with the center. So its minimum is the true minimum of the boring bar. Now when it comes to the maximum boring diameter of a boring head, which again, there isn't one, but it depends on the length of the boring bar. But when it comes to the maximum diameter, there's a couple of things you need to be careful of. So first of all, if I just want a smaller diameter than this boring bar is capable of, and I wanna just put it, let's just say right in here, and tighten that in like that. Now, when I turn the machine on, the other end of the boring bar is going to contact the bore that I'm, I'm machining. So that's not going to work. I would have to literally cut the end of this boring bar off in order for that to work. So the other caution is if you want to stick this all the way out here, Let's just say, let's just say you want to put it that far out. First of all, I'm going to kick my speed down real slow and that's a pretty radical spin. So um, anytime something is sticking that far away from the spindle, you need to keep your speed down because the surface speed on this outside diameter is going to be uh, multiplied incredibly. But it's also a huge risk to have something um, that far out. So keep hands, tools, everything away from the boring head um, and the boring bar when you use it that way. But again, just to review, its capability is dependent on the length of the shank of the boring bar. I hope this little video helped you to understand the boring heads a little bit more and the capacities, minimum and, my, uh, minimum and maximum diameter capacities on them. And um, I hope that it makes uh, your purchasing experience easier and, and uh, that you get it right the first time and, and uh, don't have to return anything uh, because you didn't understand what it was. So uh, anyway, thank you for watching. And stay tuned to see what's coming up next.